Okay, I'm going to hit going live. All right. I don't know what happened there. I thought I started, and then it said it wasn't starting. So this is the uh, trials and tribulations of doing a live episode. Um, I originally thought I'd do this yesterday, and uh, it was an experiment. I thought, how hard can it be to do a live episode? I've done them before. But this time I had to share my screen, share my computer audio and stuff. Uh, so it takes a lot more tweaking of your computer than I ever thought. So to my patrons that I said I'd probably do this live episode yesterday, I did send out a message to say it's today. Sorry for the confusion. Again, this is going to be a uh, experiment. If this works well, then I might do more episodes in the future like this now that I've kind of figured it out. Hopefully the feed is clear and uh, not too jittery. That's why I did a bunch of little test episodes just private for me to see, to see what the quality of the feed was like. I think I've dialed it in, but you know, let me know in the comments if it's uh, not up to snuff. So anyways, I just wanna say, if you have any questions about anything, you can obviously put them in the comments. Also, you can email me at cruisingoffduty at gmail.com. This episode is going to be kind of twofold, obviously from the thumbnail. The main thing is going to be that uh, we're going to talk about whether we liked our new personal electric vehicles. Let me just throw the old. This screen, let's throw this screen on. Whether we liked our personal electric vehicles, I'm riding the veteran Sherman, which is an EUC. Janice is now riding the Apollo Ghost scooter. And do we like this a lot more as our land exploring vehicles for when we sail around on Lake Ontario? And I'll get right to the Coles notes of it. Yes, we really, really do like it. But there are areas that I wish they would improve, and we'll get to that. But I also wanted to let those that are you know, a little less interested in uh, the e e personal electric vehicles, a little more interested in how our trip around Lake Ontario went, this is going to give you that episode where it's going to give you a bit of the... Uh, you know, the lay of the land, how things went. A few, I even threw in a little bonus drone footage of Niagara on the lake. So you're going to get little snippets and it's going to give you an idea of what the episodes to come are going to be like. And again, we'll decide if I do them live like this, where we interact in real time as I present my sort of uh, edited videos together, or whether we just go back to the old way where I just do voiceovers of a video, submit it, and then just respond to the comments after the fact. So let's see how this goes. Again, Trials and tribulations of live um, episodes. So, uh, this is our footage from previous seasons. This is how used to, we used to get around. Oh, hold on. Again, trials and tribulations. Let me start this video over. You probably couldn't hear that. All right, now you can hear it, I can see. So, again, repeating, this is the bikes that we used to do. They're folding bikes, we used to have them on our boat. This is the way we'd get around and explore. This was in Wapoos and wine country. We enjoyed traveling that way, but it was way too hot in the summertime to ride around for long distances, and I wanted to explore more. So I jumped on the idea of an EUC, and this is a previous episode where I unpackaged my baby and I'm super excited about it. And you can see real world 160 kilometer range. It's documented, it's supposed to be 205, but real world 160. Top speed 83 kilometers an hour. Believe me, when you see me ride, I don't go anywhere close to that. But the range is what I really, really wanted. Um, so I got this, thinking, how hard could it be to ride this thing, right? Because you see, you'll see in a second, I see kids riding it. I see everybody riding it. Here's this little kid, Brandon. I know his dad. He let me use this footage. This kid's, I think, six at this time, maybe seven. He weighs 60 pounds, and the EUC's riding weighs about 60 pounds, maybe 55. It's a little smaller than mine. But look at him. He's whipping around, no problem at all, even though he barely weighs more than the EUC. So you know, I'm seeing this, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm, I used to be a pretty athletic guy. I could probably ride this. And needless to say, it wasn't as easy as I thought. These are the other personal electric vehicle types. you got electric bikes, scooters, skateboards, a one wheel, and of course, the EUC. Bikes, the reason I ruled it out, it's too big to fit in a boat in a locker. I've never been a skateboarder, so that wasn't really a thing. The one wheel just doesn't have the range. It's like an 18 kilometer range, that's not good enough. So I ended up with an EUC. Again, all over the internet, you're seeing pictures of kids riding it. I thought the good thing about an EUC too is it's small enough to fit in a dinghy. You can take it to your boat, it should be fairly easy. It's a bit on the heavy side, but other than that, it seemed like the perfect option. 
until I tried to ride it for the first few days. And yeah, you're wearing a full face helmet, so when you take a nosedive, and that's probably what's gonna happen if you're riding at speed, you don't knock out your chiclets, but uh, you can't see where your feet are supposed to go because the visor on your helmet blocks your view. So you're kind of jumping on and guessing where your foot is. And you're gonna see in a second, my foot actually falls off and I fall on my ass. <laughs> yeah, I put that on YouTube. Yeah, good old Craig making a fool of himself. But anyways, I kept going for a couple of days. Now, unfortunately, I bought this EUC in like December. It arrived in December. So it's freezing cold outside. I'm in this open air garage and uh, you know, winter, you're cold, you're stiff, you're not exactly limber. Uh, that didn't help. And I got better with time. You know, this is maybe an hour and a half later. I'm getting pretty good. I'm actually sort of getting a little, little cocky. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going around these pillars pretty good. I do. I think I do it this time okay. Nope. This is the one I turned too, <laughs> turned too close, lost my balance, and dropped the Sherman. That Sherman got dropped like 15 times that day. Luckily, it's a veteran Sherman. It's built like a tank. It's got roll bars and all this stuff. So you can drop it and it pretty much lands on the bars. No harm, no foul. But with continued practice, the hardest part is getting on and getting off. Once you get rolling, it's relatively easy. But I mean, I was kind of like, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get for now. And then I put out this episode where I said, I think I did a very, very dumb thing. An EUC, especially a Sherman, which is a 77 pound EUC, is such a steep learning curve. I thought I should, maybe I should have just got a scooter. Now I did say in there, I'm still gonna keep trying. I'm not gonna let it beat me. And this is me in the spring when I'm warmer, more limber. And all of a sudden I hadn't ridden all winter. All of a sudden it didn't seem nearly as hard. And all I can try chalk that up to is it's spring now and I'm not wearing a coat and it's a little bit easier to ride. And uh, I picked it up pretty quickly. So I just wanna clear that up. You gotta just keep pushing yourself to keep learning. Uh, yeah, you'll fall down. Yeah, you'll get bruises on your shins. You know, but once you get good at it, it's pretty fun. Now, granted, here I'm still relatively new. I wasn't super confident in stopping quickly, which is always my fear of being out in a busy road is somebody's going to cut you off. And you got to really lean back to make it stop fast. And I always felt like the wheels are just going to shoot out from underneath me if I try and stop too quickly. You know, you get better with time. After seeing what I went through, Janice had no interest in getting EUC. So we ended up deciding to get her a scooter. And this is the one we uh, picked. It's the uh, Apollo Ghost. It's a pretty high-end, relatively high-end scooter. It's got dual motors, disc brakes, uh, shocks on both the front and back wheel. It's got a pretty good range. And this is my one and only beef with the Apollo Ghost. It says it's 62 kilometers. There it says right there. But the reality is it does about 47 because we ran out of juice twice on longer trips. Like mine can do 160 and hers can only do 47. So we're really, um, the bottleneck in our travels is, is her scooter. Now you can bring the charger in a backpack and then go to like a Starbucks or a Tim Hortons or something and plug in. And we found 15, 20 minutes of, of charge time will get you, you know, quite a few kilometers. This is just showing that it folds down. Not only the main stock, the handlebars, but we never fold the handlebars. It doesn't really save you that much. It fits in the uh, lazarette locker of our boat quite nicely. Needless to say, the EUC fits in really easy. The only thing with the EUC, it's 77 pounds. At first, I thought that might be an issue for a boat, but when we got right down to it, I get in the dinghy and pull the dinghy nice and close. Janice has it on the swim platform, which is only a couple feet, two, two feet above the water. And we just kind of roll it onto the dinghy and into the bottom. And actually wasn't a problem at all. So there, there you go. The, uh, I guess it just went by there. The uh, instrument panel on the Apollo is amazing. It's also a key ignition. So if you're just popping into a, a corner store to grab a drink, you probably don't need to lock it up. You just take the key out. Nobody can really push this thing and use it unless they can turn it on. So there you go. So this is where I'm going to little take a break from this video and bring up, um, uh, going to bring up this. This is Google Earth. Now this is, just wanted to show you, for those that were more interested in our path around Lake Ontario, where we went and visited, what cities we visited. So, should we do it in 3D? Let's do it in 3D. Um, this is where we start. This is Kingston. This is our club right here. This is the Collins Bay Yacht Club. <clears throat> so first time we were this at this club, which is actually the first time we've been at a yacht club, which gives you reciprocal agreements with other yacht clubs, which was very cool on this trip. But uh, yeah, I'd love to give you drone footage of this beautiful club, but as you can clearly see, there's a airport. We are literally on the landing strip. So when we're sitting on our boat here, 
or around here all day it's little doubts of small airports they're not jumbo jets they're like the Lear jets the little ones um, they come coasting in above our head which is kind of cool and we also have a railway track that goes by here so we're either watching planes go over our head or railways go by it's pretty cool it's also super social club very similar to the Nepean sailing club which is the one we fell in love with when we first started sailing on the Ottawa river but once we went to the St. Lawrence, we've been bouncing from club to club trying to find that club atmosphere, and we found it in Collins Bay Marina. So if you're in the Kingston area and you're looking for a really sociable, fun club that's packed, I mean, it, everybody loves it there, so there's a waiting list. But once you get in there, you're going to be happy. So just zooming out here, I put this little arrow on here. This is Lake Ontario. Let me, let me give you the old bird's eye view of it. This is, uh, if you're from some other part of the world and you're not sure what this is, this is part of the Great Lakes. This is Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, and whatnot. There's five Great Lakes, and there's more fresh water in these five Great Lakes than any other water area of the world. So this is, this is like little tiny oceans, little oceans. So Lake Ontario is the one we're on, um, but the prevailing wind generally is from the west-southwest. Um, so as you can see, leaving Kingston, we're going to Toronto as our, like we were in a rush to get to Toronto for Canada Day, meet Jake and his girlfriend and that. We don't have time to dilly dally. So we were trying to decide, do we go outside here and around this Prince Edward County Peninsula? This is actually a peninsula because there's a canal right here. Or do we go through the uh, Bay of Quinte inward passage, which is what we did last year. And we thought, well, we'll go this way on the way to Toronto and we'll go this way on the way back because of the wind, the wind angle. So. If you're a sailor, you would know this. If you come out here and the wind is going across Lake Ontario, that huge body of water, by the time it gets to this side of Lake Ontario, the waves are huge because they've had time to build up. The only time there's not a lot of waves is A, there's no wind, or B, if it's coming from the north, then you know you hug the shoreline and it's not too bad. But we, it was windy, windy the day we left. And we like, we're not going the outer passage. We're going to go the inside passage. And we're really glad we did. There's just so much more to see here. So you go into the wind. I think we mostly motored. I think the wind was a little off angle, so we motor sailed uh, until we got to past Picton here. And then, of course, we're on a beam reach, so we just flew at like over seven knots because it was like a 25 knot wind that day. So we were going slow into the wind and then fast on a beam. And then we turned, and this is our first anchorage. Uh, this Every day we were trying to do about 45 nautical miles. Hey, Terry, how's it going? Um, so this is the anchorage we always pick every year. It's, I don't know, I think, for, I forget what the name of it is, but it's on, the, it's on the Navionics with a little anchor symbol so you know it's an anchorage. Nice muddy bottom, really good. The next day we go by Belleville. We hit Belleville on the uh, way back, but we were in a rush to get to Toronto, so we did 45 nautical miles. The most uh, visually fun thing to go through is the Murray Canal, which has swing bridges. So you call them on the radio and they swing the bridge, and it's funny, there's a $5 fee to cross through the the Murray Canal, which is hilarious, $5. I mean, it's not even worth these people's time to, they go out with a little can on a, on a pole and hang it out over the water and you throw $5 in the cup, it's, it's hilarious. But I've got footage of that for those who wanna watch the sailing stuff. Those will be in coming episodes. Then we went through Presqu'ile Bay here. It looks green on here and it is green. It's very shallow. It's only like seven, eight, nine feet through here. And when it's hot summertime, oftentimes you don't wanna get out of the channel at all because the weeds are super thick. And we were fighting the wind and fighting the weeds, so we didn't get a lot of speed through there. And then it's pretty much clear sailing, or clear motoring in this case, if you're going against the wind, until we got to Coburg. And this is our favorite place to anchor, right here in Coburg. It's nice, nice protected wall, so even if it's windy as hell in Lake Ontario, you can get in here and it's nice and calm and it's great. And the town of Coburg, it's kind of small, so there's not a lot of EUC slash scooter riding to do because there's no long bike paths along the shore or anything, it's just, shopping malls and, and residential places. So we didn't you see here, but I'm telling you walking distance within a couple blocks, there's all sorts of things to do and eat and, and whatnot. So you don't really need a scooter or a bike there. Then let's move out to, so we do another 40 something miles all the way across the North Shore until we got to Whitby. And we didn't stop here last year, I don't believe. Um, this is the first time. So on the way through, COVID still had lockdown. So none of the reciprocal clubs at this point were accepting reciprocal at that point because they have COVID and we're not allowed to let transient boats in. And so we had no choice but to anchor and we anchored right here. Uh, we needed to stop and we wanted to be inside protected water off the big lake uh, possibility of big waves overnight because that's very unfun to try and sleep on Lake Ontario if there's any waves at all. And that was it. We anchored there. 
Again, we hit Whitby on the way back and we do a ton of EUC riding. So we didn't really get to use our personal electric vehicles till we got to Toronto. And Toronto is, if you've got a boat on another lake and you can go through like the Welland Canal and come to Lake Ontario and you only have time to go to one place, go to Toronto. Um, it's beautiful. So let me just give you the old 3D perspective here. So this is what, uh, you know, anybody who's Canadian probably knows what Toronto is all about. Let me get it like this. So there you go. You've got the CN Tower and the Rogers Centre where the baseball's played and whatnot, concerts and whatnot. It's a beautiful city, but like I say, when you turn around, you see there's also a lot of places to anchor for free. I, I mark them all. So our number one anchorage is we always seem to default to is, um, is uh, Wards Beach. And we kind of, kind of almost always go there because you know there's out, you know, lots of boats anchor there, so it's very good bottom. There's no debris. If you watched last year's season, we actually tried to anchor here yes, last year, and we got our anchor fouled in some mooring ball bases that were still down there. So there used to be a bunch of mooring balls here, and nobody's bothered to clean the bottom. So you run a risk if you're not in an official anchorage of getting your anchor and your chain stuck on who knows what. Um, but oh, let me just get back to north so it looks the direction that it's supposed to be. So the other places we anchored were uh, here at the end on the trip back. We actually found a nice spot to anchor here. We anchored here because a big storm was coming through, and we pulled in here to attempt to anchor here, which was on Navionics and Anchorage. But there was already a boat anchored there, and it's very small. And if there's a boat in the middle, there's not a lot of room for you as well. So we kind of bailed on that one with the intention of going to this one that's on Navionics as an anchorage. Uh, but we got here and the channel is so shallow, we thought we might get stuck. But we saw a sailboat and a powerboat anchored here. So we were like, oh, it's not really marked as an anchorage, but can't see why not. So we anchored there and we spent two days and one night overnight there. No problem on the way through Toronto. And we came back on the way back through Toronto on the way back east. And we thought, well, we were there before, we'll go again. And we anchored there. And um, I think, did we stay the night there or were we just there for the day? Anyways. A police boat showed up. One of those, you know, big Zodiac boats, police boats showed up. And they're very, very polite. They said, you can't anchor here. And I'm like, well, okay, can I anchor these other two spots? Because it shows on Navionics. And according to them, they say the whole inner part of the Toronto Centre Island is a park. And you're therefore not allowed to anchor, even though Navionics has lots of reviews of people who have anchored here and here. If you don't want to anchor, there's a wall here. That's There's almost relative, unless it's a Saturday. Um, there's almost always spots here. So if you want to tie up to the wall, there is a fee but you do get power. So if that's the sort of thing you can want, then you can always tie there. Because in the summertime, getting into these marinas, you know, there's 2.7 million people or something like that living in Toronto and limited boating space. So good luck, even with a reciprocal, we called them and, and they were like, nope, sorry, no space. So we anchored here and it was perfect. And pretty much, as you can see from every wind angle, you know, no matter which way the wind's coming, you're gonna be, you're gonna be good. So we like that. Now where we rode, I'm gonna show you some footage in a second. Where we rode is this yellow line on this peninsula here. It's called um, Tommy something park. I forget what the last name is. Might show up if I can zoom in. Tommy Thompson Park. So what we do, we found a little trick here, is you go into the Outer Harbor Marina here. There's a fuel dock here. You come in, you fuel up, you say, hey, we got to get some provisions because the grocery stores and whatnot are just over here. Um, so you say, do you mind if we uh, tie up to this visitor wall? Like, it's huge, this wall. And there's, like, plenty of space. Do you mind if we tie up to the visitor wall and go you know, go get provisions? And they're like, yeah, no problem because you bought gas, right? And so uh, we tie up there. And then what we did was we went and got groceries after we did decided to do the old touristy ride on our uh, EUC and uh, scooter. And uh, I'll show you that footage now. So let's go over to, uh, back to the video. Again with the nose sound. Oh no, there is sound. No, no, Janice can't ride. I can't ride and film. I can't it. ride and film at the same time. I handed it to her and she needs two hands to hold on. So. I do. The I'm gonna, went like all wheel. Wow. Any footage of me will be stationary. <laughs> and she'll get all the moving face yeah, footage. Yeah, I'll get all the good footage. All right. Okay, we made it to the very end of the bike path peninsula. Actually, it went pretty quick with no, all the. Oh, yes, it was fun. It was beautiful. We move a little faster on our electric scooter. We we're passing almost everyone. Only yeah. one guy passed us. Yeah, one guy, he had an electric bike too. Yeah. An electric mountain bike. He, he went faster than we did. He was you know, he had a motive. He had a motive. He's on a Why time trial. 
Um, there's a lighthouse at the very end of the end of the peninsula, and just to show you that we are at the end of the peninsula, there is Toronto. And we've been anchoring at Ward's Beach, which I believe is just out of sight behind these trees. Yeah, probably. Just over here around these trees is Ward's Beach. We've been there a lot. So there's multiple ways to get to the end. There's a bunch of bike paths split off from one another. And you can choose whichever one. I think they all end up the same spot. Probably, right? Uh, eh. No. So we can go back this I way. We came from yeah. that way over there. And then to get the other side, there's a cutoff. There's a right yeah. turn. So there's more to explore. but. Yeah, it didn't take us very long. I knew this was a long way. People walking would take a long, long it time. It a long time to walk yeah. well, This is beautiful. Look at that. Sailing in Toronto. Okay, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a great time. We went all over the place on the bike paths uh, on the peninsula. I saw every single one pretty much, I think. Yeah, we saw everyone. Yeah. And then we went shopping in downtown Toronto, and Loblaws. Well, kind of a sight. Well, Busy enough, busy enough streets that I was, this is the first time we've really been uh, riding these things in busy roads with stoplights and multiple lanes and cars and all that stuff, but it was fun. Yeah, so I got a full backpack of like all kinds of stuff and two groceries. I was able to manage just fine with a grocery bag on each handle. Yeah. That's perfect. And there's our boat right there. Hopefully that's in just a shot. We're just there on the visitor wall and then we're going to go out and anchor probably at Ward's Beach again. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's, we'll get on to Etobicoke now. I'm going to pause the video. Uh, I'll just answer a couple of these questions. First, uh, hey, Scotty from Atlanta, and um, someone else asked me a question. Are they legal out on the road, the EUCs? Uh, yes, they're treated like electric bikes, so anywhere a bike can go. A lot of Canadian cities have bike lanes, so they have the normal uh, driving lanes for cars, and then right on against the uh, curb is a, a bike lane. Um, and the great thing about Google... Um, maps is you go on Google Maps and you hit a like a filter and you say bike lane or bike path and it highlights in a bright green every street or road or bike path uh, so you can go hey we want to go here and th we know that there's a bike lane or a bike path all the way so you don't accidentally just go on a really congested road with no bike lane so yeah you can ride a electric scooter or an EUC pretty much anywhere a bike can go um, I know I've heard rumor that there's like a speed limit, so you can't be riding your EUC at like 80 kilometers an hour, which mine theoretically could do. But I mean, you'll see some footage of me riding. I ride pretty conservatively. Also, Janice's was, you know, fairly new on the scooter and there's three gears, speed gears, one, two, and three. I don't think she ever used three ever. She used two a couple of times when we were on really long straight roads and there was nobody around and she wanted to pick it up. But most of the time she was riding in gear one. So she was only doing like 20, four 26 kilometers an hour so i would go at 26 kilometers an hour when she go to gear two i think she was doing like 36 kilometers an hour 40 uh, maybe 42 at the most and that's fine that's a comfortable speed where you don't feel like if i fall off i'm gonna have serious serious injuries uh anything above 50 i would feel pretty uncomfortable at this stage now granted if i was wearing the knee pads and everything i i tend to wear the wrist pads and the elbow pads but i wasn't wearing the knee pads because when we got places, we were often going grocery shopping or going to a restaurant or whatever. I didn't want to carry like a, a ton of extra gear. So as long as I have the, as long as I don't lose my chiclets, I don't care if I lose a little bit of like I had elbow and shin, uh, wrist pads. So hopefully most of it would land on that, but my knee might get scraped or something, but I can live with that. I, I just didn't want to lose my teeth. So the other question was, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Did I have any unicycle experience before? No, that's why you saw me falling down and having such trouble. I'd never ridden any single wheel, no one wheel, no nothing. I've never snowboarded. I've never done any of that. I used to downhill ski with two skis, but it's a totally different thing than riding a one wheel thing. The thing with the unicycle too, is it's all about leaning. So when you put your foot on the pedal, you, you're guessing because you can't see it because the, the helmet's blocking your view. You have to throw your foot on and hope that you're not way too far forward on the pedal or way too far back. Um, if you're too far forward, what you end up doing is you start accelerating even when you don't want to accelerate and you end up trying to lean back the whole time to slow yourself down, which then after a while your heels get sore because you're putting all your weight on your heels to slow yourself down and vice versa. If you throw your foot on the pedal too far back, then you can you constantly feel like you got to lean really hard to get the EUC to speed up. So uh, there you go. Uh, 
anybody doing a, anybody doing a transatlantic crossing that Craig can go on? Yeah, I've done two transatlantic crossings where people have invited me to go based on seeing me on the channel, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, sure. If somebody, I mean, maybe not a transatlantic again because the last one was like eight over eight weeks. That was a long time. I had to get special permission from work to get off for that long. Uh, but if somebody's in the Caribbean and they want to go a transit from one part of the Caribbean to another, I'd, I'd be all for it. You know, I think the border will open soon too, so I'll be able to actually fly. Oh, in case, side note, the Canadian border has been closed to the United States this whole time. Um, rumor is it's going to reopen, but um, Janice and I are probably going to skip the Annapolis sailboat show even if the borders open because I think it'll be miserable. Um, there's going to be, I'm sure, you know how it is if you go on the Annapolis show, the people are just packed on the docks. Well, I think they're really going to limit how many people get in. I think every boat that you see is going to have a waiting uh, by appointment only. Only one couple or one family can get on the boat at a time. And once they're done looking, the next couple can go on. It's not going to be the free for all that it's been in the past. So it would be really hard for us to get on and film a lot of boats. And then standing in lines for hours with masks on to get in, to get your turn to see a boat. Eh, just not interested. So in February is the Miami Boat Show. I've already talked to Tomas from Exquisite Yachts and his new X5 Plus is going to be at Annapolis and Miami, but he also suggested we go to Miami. If you've been watching the news, Miami for months and months and months has been acting like COVID never happened. Nobody's wearing a mask. They're having full concert venues. It's just like business as usual down there. So the Miami show will be a hell of a lot more fun. Plus, we get to get out of the cold Canadian winters in February. And last year, because of COVID, we didn't get to go anywhere. And as you can see from the video, we gained a little COVID beef over the lockdown because we were so bored, couldn't see friends, couldn't see family. And what do you do when you're like, it's a Friday night, Saturday night, you wanna have some fun? You order a pizza or you have chicken wings or you do something and you know, they say the camera puts on 10 pounds, but it clearly, if you look at the video, this lens I'm using must've put on 30 pounds because yeah, we're, we're showing the COVID effects, but anyways, so you don't need to tell me we're gaining, we've gained weight, you, we, uh, we are well aware of it. So anyways, let's get back to the, oh yeah, the, we wanna do the Google, uh, Google, Google. Okay, Google Earth. So here's Toronto. And so really, Toronto to Etobicoke is literally like, it's not even, it's like a hop, hop across. But this is the first place, and the reason we picked here is while we were in Toronto, they opened up the province to allow transient boaters to uh, have reciprocals. So all these yacht clubs now allowed people, and we were like calling all these yacht clubs, especially Toronto, can we get in, can we get in? They're like, sorry, we're full, we're full, we're full. But Etobicoke said they weren't full. So we thought close enough to Toronto that if we wanted to, we could get on our scooter or EUC and, and rip down one of these bike paths along and get back into Toronto. Plus, it would be a great experience, our first experience having a reciprocal. And we ended up going into the Etobicoke Yacht Club and we were right here on their visitor dock and it is beautiful. Unfortunately, it rained nonstop. We ended up being there two days thinking, well, it'll eventually stop raining and we can go ride around. We needed provisions. Um, and uh, it only stopped raining for about two hours, according to the radar and all that. We had two hour window. Um, so Janice went alone on her scooter. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable riding my one wheel EUC in rain. Imagine trying to stop leaning back and the thing goes flying out from underneath you in the middle of a busy traffic uh, intersection. So she just zipped over to uh, Costco, which is somewhere in here, I don't know. She looked it up on Google map and found Costco and uh, yeah, there and back in no time. She said it was super easy. Of course, with a scooter, it's like riding a bike. Worst case scenario, you know, we've all ridden a bike when it's raining. It's not the end of the world. You might get a little wet, but uh, so she did that. So we did ride, but we didn't film it. So let me get back to the video. I think I accidentally rewound us a bit there. We're at Collins Bay. Okay. Club. The one. Let me just go back a few more. Okay. But it was fun. Yeah, so I got a full backpack of like all kinds of Stuff and You're just gonna have to watch this little bit again. <laughs> Stupid yeah. magic mouse, you swipe by There's accident. Our boat and you <laughs> right them. there, yeah. hopefully that's in just a shot. We're just there on the visitor wall and then we're gonna go out and anchor probably at Ward's Beach again. Again, this is Etobicoke. Okay, this is, this is exciting for us. This is our first time being at a yacht club, the one we're at Collins Bay, where they have reciprocal and uh, We've actually taken advantage of it. Last year, COVID, nobody was taking transients. This year, they weren't at first when we called around. And then we heard things had changed after our vacation had already started. And so now we are at the Etobicoke Yacht Club. 
beautiful. So this is the Etobicoke Yacht Club that we're in, and right adjacent to it is the Mimico. I don't know if it's a yacht club or if it's a marina. Um, that's the difference. If you're in a yacht club, you have reciprocal, and if you're in a marina, it's usually just a marina. You don't have reciprocal. The last few years, we've been at Portsmouth Olympic Harbor, which is just a marina, so we've never had reciprocal options. And this is the first year now that we're at Collins Bay. Janice is happy. I'm happy. Exciting. We get shore power and water, which is we've been anchoring out so long. We've been very indulgent, or I have. With the showers. Yes, Janice loves her showers. We're shower every day. Okay. She knew we were coming here and she thought we're probably getting water, so she just blew through a, wa a big long shower today. But anyways, this is the view. It would be nice if it was sunny, but you know, I think you get the, the flavor of what it looks like around here, even if it is kind of a overcast, gloomy looking day. We are stuck here in Etobicoke in the pouring rain, and these two swans swam in the inner side of this little dock right up to our boat. And yes, we threw bread. That was bad, I know. I don't know if that's bad, but we wanted to mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways. They are very Bye. docile. Goodbye. They're under the dock now. They can't see much now. They were over here where we were. See their whole so, bodies. Yeah, see their whole bodies. Something to do in the rain, though. Something to do in the rain. Look at this. It's been going like this I on and off. I can hold my umbrella all while, day. while we chase them down the dock. <laughs> I think we shouldn't do that. Okay, so that was Etobicoke. Again, no footage of the actual EUC, but it's it's a really nice place. So from the boating aspect, if you're into that sort of thing, this is what you're watching the video for. What's it like? That is definitely a place I would highly suggest. And the next place we stopped was at Oakville, Bronte Park. So there's two entrances to Oakville. There's actually this one where there's some sailboats. Uh, there's a yacht club there. Again, they were. I don't think they were available. No, they weren't available. There was some sort of regatta going on. And then we ended up going to this one. This is not a... This is not a, this is a marina. This is not a, a yacht club. So we couldn't go there. Well, we, we could have paid to go there, but we've learned from last year, there is a visitor dock slip here that nobody seems to ever use. So we uh, tied up there and we, uh, we did ride around in uh, Oakville. It, I, again, people in the area might call it Bronte, Bronte Park area. It's just another part of Oakville. So uh, let's go and check that out. Which way is it? There we are. Oh yeah, and this is the first time I used my 360 camera. Um, I've had it for a while. <laughs> I just never got used to how to use it, and I thought, oh, I'll use it on this. And it actually worked out pretty cool. So the way, if you're not aware, a 360 camera, it's a five point something megapixel or whatever a camera that just shoots in every direction, and then you edit it to the point where you want it to point. So you can film yourself, or you can film the person in front of you, or you can film cars going by whatever you want to do. It's pretty cool, so I'll let you see that. Oh, in case you're wondering, you know how I said before, Janice can't hold the camera and ride. She's too, uh, well, she wants to have two hands on the old handlebars. We ended up mounting it to her uh, to her handlebars and it worked perfect with the 360 camera. It's, I'm not, I didn't even stabilize this. This is all done in camera. When we use our regular vlog camera on our handlebars, it's super jittery and you'll see, um, some footage coming up when I'm in Hamilton, or sorry, Niagara, where it's mounted to our handlebars and even stabilizing it, it it's, it's kind of obviously jittery. But I just love this 360 camera. I mean, watch this, we're gonna go by this apartment building and I just decide to pan over and check it out. You know, that's pretty cool. You can't do that with a normal camera. And Jana certainly couldn't be turning the camera so smoothly with her own bare hand, even if she could ride with one hand. So yeah, I'm gonna get more of this. At the time I shot this footage, I wasn't even sure how it was coming out, so I didn't uh, I didn't use it as much as I probably should have. I also found that um, that uh, the battery life I only had one battery. The battery life is not very good on those cameras. So put my little face back on the screen here. Um, so that was Bronte Beach, and the next thing is Hamilton. Now this is the lift bridge. This is kind of a cool thing. This bridge here. Like this one's way up high, it's a highway. This one's down low, so you have to come in, you call them on the radio and they lift it. There's no fee, but it's kind of cool to do it. But if you watched last year's episode, 
Janice kind of freaked out the first time because visually it looks like the, your mass is taller than the bridge. Like he goes up to a certain height and stops because he knows he's up at like 70 feet or whatever. And you're, he can look at you and he can tell you're lower than that. So he stops and we, and I go, well, I guess we're done. Let's go. And she started freaking out. No, we're going to hit the bridge. Um, kind of funny if you go back and watch that episode. And then the guy saw that we were, she was panicking and actually rose it another like 10 feet just to prove to her that it was high enough. But after that, we learned, okay, when he's done, when he gets to a certain height, just trust him, go through. So we go there and then... Um, Hamilton is funny. It is so weird. So this side is Hamilton, the left side, and this side is Burlington. And as you can see, Burlington has like golf courses and all the houses are super swanky and they're all lots of green. And then you flip to this side and it's just like factory after factory after factory. So it is um, an interesting dichotomy. But we anchored here and... Um, you know, it's shallow, as you can kind of tell from the watercolor, it's shallow. It's also water flows through here. And this little holding pond is a bit on the, I guess, murky side. So, you know, it sort of pulls through in here. It's not pollution. It's it's not it's nowhere near the factories. It's not pollution. It's just silt, I guess. But um, we ended up, what we did was we got went from here across in our dinghy and tied up to this cement pier right here. And then we got on and there is an amazing bike path system in, in Hamilton. Uh, we learned this last year. We were not actually looking forward to going to Hamilton at all because it's so industrial. We're like, oh, God, it's going to be ugly. And we got there, and there's so many bike paths to follow all around here. Um, this was the first time that we ran out of power on her scooter. And that's when we learned there's no such thing as 62 kilometers. We figured maybe she got 45 or something, 47. Uh, but we had to walk at the last, uh, you know, not very far. I think we ran out around here around this corner and uh, you'll see in the episodes that come we, we talk about it um, and then we walked it the last bit to uh, to the boat so that was the first time we ran out of power on her scooter so if I have to make a complaint again about the scooter everything's good except for the range is a bit on the uh, crappy side well crappy compared to the uh, EUC again the 360 camera still using it Okay, so this was the next spot. And I mean, anybody from the Lake Ontario area would know Niagara on the lake. I mean, it is beautiful. I mean, you're going to see some footage of us riding through. And this is exactly the way this the main drag looks. It's all these beautiful, I don't know what they're called, Victorian houses. Um, lots of flowers all the way down the middle of the road and on the sides. It is a picture postcard city or town city i guess um and it's also called niagara on the lake because it's niagara where the niagara falls are the world renowned niagara falls but it's actually we know exactly how far it is 25 kilometers away uh to where we were at the niagara on the lake yacht club and uh so we did so much riding first we rode around in the town looking at all the beauty and then on the next day we did the 25 kilometer each way so 50 kilometer round trip to niagara falls we're going to show you that but that's when we ran out of battery the second time because we got to niagara and um, this is the problem with the the scooter it's got five bars for your battery but just assume that the one bar is no bar because you'll be at two bars and that you think two out of five that's 40 percent so we got still quite a bit of range left and then it gets to one bar and you go maybe a kilometer and it stops. So one bar is, might as well say you're on empty when it's one bar. Uh, I would have thought it would have gotten, you know, another 20% of the, the range, but no. So that was the second time we ran out. We actually brought the battery charger in our backpack, but when we left Niagara, it still showed three bars out of five. But the minute we left town, it went to two. And then I thought, well, it's still enough range. And then, boof, it just died with us about 3.8 kilometers away from our uh, yacht club. So let's check this out. 
Oh, I mean, I could show you it on the on the Google map, but you get the you get the picture. Niagara is a is a beautiful area, so let's just just check out the video. So all the way along, obviously the beautiful flowers everywhere, but it's all like bistros and restaurants. <laughs> Janice, we, um, yeah, it's just very pretty town, and. Uh, I'll, talk, I'll answer some of the questions. I see them in uh, the comments. I'll answer after I get this paused again. But uh, you can see we don't ride very fast and we ride off to the side. Um, the one thing uh, I did buy after this trip is a, a mirror for my wrist because I cannot look behind me. I can't turn my, my whole body to see what's behind me because as soon as you do anything that puts you off balance, you accidentally turn or you start to accelerate when you didn't mean to and, and uh, it's whatnot. Now my- ice cream place? <laughs> Has it looks like about ice cream. Uh, mine has some serious uh, get up and go if I want to. And this is a little bonus footage. I know everybody loves the drone stuff. I'll just disappear off the screen for you. But this is um, the American side. So on the Niagara River, on the left side is the American side, and this is a fort. And on the Canadian side, there's a fort. Back in like, 1812, there was actually a war between what is Canada now, it was part of Britain, and the US, and they used to battle over who had what land. Um, so it's kind of funny that they could literally fire across the river at each other. Um, but this was the uh, Niagara on the Lake Yacht Club. And this is our boat right here. That's us, that's off duty right there. So um, we love, I mean, it's, we love this area. We are definitely going back if we can find a thing. And this is the uh, Niagara Falls. This is what we're heading to. Good morning. We have a big plan today. Want to tell them what we're It's planning. our biggest adventure of the whole vacation so far. Mm -hmm. We got all geared up our, with our PEVs, personal yep. electric vehicles. We got a backpack strapped to it so it doesn't swing around. So there's her Polo scooter with the backpack strapped on and then I've got my EUC over there. That's still where we're tied to the dock. So there's that bike path all the way from pretty much here to the falls. And, and it's supposed to be an, an hour, hour and a half by bike. Yeah. So it will be a little faster than a bike. So maybe just over an hour. Hopefully. Yeah. So Google Maps, you can pick bike option and it said an hour and 30. It's 25 kilometers around. Something like that, yeah. Okay. An hour and a half biking. So we think we'll get there in an hour. We'll let you know how it goes. But yeah. So but it's, since it's a big adventure, like a big trip, we're going to go for the day. We brought yeah. clean t-shirts, baseball caps, yeah. water. Oh yeah. And it's about 30 degrees today. So, it's so it's we're going to be very sweaty, but it's the only day we have to work yeah. with. So it's got to be today. When we do scooter or EUC, we're moving through the air pretty quick. So that cools you down as well. So yeah. it's nice. It's actually better when you're moving than when you stop. For sure. <laughs> All right. So we'll let you know how it goes. So as you can see, I sped this up because it's, I just wanted to show you how great this bike path is all the way. Pretty much we only had to go on the road for one little tiny piece of it. The rest of the time we were always on a bike path like this or even wider at some points. This one's actually a normal, kind of a normal bike path. But sometimes the bike path would be even wider and there'd be a line down the middle. So it kind of implied everybody on the right goes one direction, everybody on the other side goes the other direction, which is I always appreciate when that happens. But you can see we kind of catch up to bikers and then we have to just be patient until there's a clear spot to uh, pass them. Okay, we've gone what, 14 and a bit of kilometers? Yeah, we're we're more, more than halfway. More than halfway. We're very sweaty. It's actually hot when you stop. It's cool when you, or cooler when you move. Just thought we'd show you this. We came along, the, now this is the bike path. It's been beautiful. I mean, no reason to stop. Plenty of room to go by pedestrians and stuff. We saw this building and all these, I guess hydro lines? I'm not sure what they are. Yep. This is definitely a hydroelectric dam. Well, there's another one over there. So this is pretty cool. So we thought we'd stop and show you this. This is the Niagara River. This is what goes over the well-known Niagara Falls. Very cool. Okay, we have made it. I don't know if you can see the uh, falls back there. We'll give you a better view of that. We stopped. The first place we saw as we're coming down the hill is this botanical garden that Janice knew about and she wanted to come in and look at. There's Janice getting all fresh and ready. And there's more parks everywhere. Like parks, parks, parks everywhere you can see. But yeah, we're gonna go check out the falls. Okay, so we've gotten up to the wall now, so we can give you an even better view. So this is the American side. This is the American Falls. They don't get the beautiful Horseshoe Falls that we'll show you a little more later down there. Uh, this is the American Falls. They have a lookout. They have their own boat, like kind of a made of the mist. I don't know if the Canadian one's the made of the mist or the American one. The American one, you can tell everybody gets the blue trench coats. And the Canadian one, I just saw it go behind the tree over there, you get red trench coats for Canada. So uh, they share this little waterway. So there's the Canadian version made of the misty thing. Uh, red for Canada. 
blue for American. Um, we all end up driving into the same Horseshoe Falls. And they go right in there, that's why they're wearing ponchos. And they get totally soaked. In fact, we're getting wet, I don't know if it's, spots are going on lens probably, because they're going on my sunglasses. But uh, even here, the mist is uh, pretty thick. We'll go a little closer, give you a little bit better view, but camera's gonna get soaked. Okay, we walked down far enough, you're actually out of the mist. Yeah. It was really wet, wet back there. It's all blowing that way. It's blowing that way, so we come fairly close to the falls. There's the Horseshoe Falls. There's one of those made of the mist. This is the American version. I think I've been watching, that's about as close as they get because of the current, and then they get turned around. So, yeah. You don't mind getting wet. The problem is I didn't bring a camera that's waterproof, so going on there would be kind of counterproductive. To try and spend film. our money on lunch. Yeah. Okay, clearly this is officially the closest place I could show you Horseshoe Falls. Pretty sweet. Look how many hats have fallen over. <laughs> hats have blown off and now you're not allowed to go over the fence. So you're not getting your... You like the blue? Go get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is it. In all its splendor. It's awesome. This is awesome. Now let's go into this welcome center and see if there's somewhere there's we can eat. Places. There's a restaurant back there. Excellent. Up there. We are starving. It looks like a food court also inside. Okay, so. Let's go back to, uh, so this is, uh, let me bring it over to Niagara. i also put myself back on the screen. So there we go, that was Niagara. Oh, we actually, we stopped at St. Catharines too. I forgot to mention that. The reason I didn't uh, show you any of that, we didn't, we didn't ride anywhere here, um, just no bike paths. You know, when I told you about going on Google Maps and like doing bike paths, there was really nothing to, to like, nothing picturesque along the waterfront to, to look at. So we didn't bother, but actually we ended up anchoring here just for the afternoon for like maybe a few hours just to see what it's like oh and this is the Welland canal this is where all the big freighters come through like there's more than one lock and this is how you go from lake ontario which is here to lake erie which is let me just zoom her down there lake erie over here so the big freighters come through here and so we thought we would whoa that's way too much the, we thought we'd anchor right here because we kept seeing them coming in and out it's kind of fun to film so I anchored here and I uh, got my drone up. So I got some drone footage of uh, freighters going through the uh, locks and all that stuff. Very, very cool. But uh, we didn't ride there. But, I, you know, it's funny. We, we thought about it afterwards. It actually would have been a sweet ride because all the way along the Welland Canal is a bike path. All the way to Erie. I mean, obviously, I, I might be able to go that far in mine, but Janice certainly couldn't go that far in her scooter. But something for next time, if we had more time, the, the problem was we had a slip booked in Niagara on the Lake, and so we couldn't dilly-dally because we'd already paid for the slip. So the way Niagara on the Lake worked is you pay for the first night and you get a reciprocal for the second night, maybe also a third night, but we had already booked it, so we didn't know that that Welling Canal thing would be so awesome, or we might have booked it for a day later. But um, yeah, so this was where we, uh, where we got our visitor slip, right there. It was uh, great, you know, it's always nice to have shore power because then you can, you know, charge everything. I mean, we have solar, but if, you know, you get a rainy couple of days, you know, everything, all your batteries, your laptops, your cameras, everything need to be charged and you don't get a, as much solar as you'd like. So, um, yeah, I guess if I want to try and go to the falls. So it's, uh, well, there's that hydro dam that I was showing you and the falls are way over here. So as you can see, that's a long way to go on a scooter and we, uh, we didn't make it back. Oh, Clifton Hill. When I eventually show you the real sailing episodes where we get into detail, there's all sorts of really amazing tourist attractions here. There's like, this is like a racing go-karty thing. There's a big Ferris wheel somewhere. I don't know where, it, I don't see why I don't see it. But there's a thing called Clifton Hill, which is all like haunted houses and all this other stuff. Uh, so many good things to do. This was funny though. We were there and the province was still at their one level below opening things so nothing indoor was allowed to uh be open so here's a water park there's all just a million attractions here it's like disney world but uh everything indoors was closed the very next day even though we had no slip for the next day at the yacht club everything was opening so unfortunately we had to leave um so there you go that's the lay of the land that's niagara so we'll take you back so just as a, a point of interest here i'm gonna find my bearings now Oh, it's probably best if I just hit the old compass. Whee! So, there's Niagara on the lake. Now, check this out. 
This is the US Canadian border. So it actually is that strict. Usually in normal non-COVID times, American Coast Guard doesn't give a crap if a Canadian boat goes through American waters because our borders are always open. Um, like we have the most, the longest unprotected border in the world between two countries. So it's pretty laissez-faire. You cross the water into their water, it doesn't matter. If you go to shore, you just do a video conference call to a number, like a 1-800 number. They do like a FaceTime call with you. They ask you a few questions. They may ask you to look around your boat like with your camera and then you're in, boom. Same thing on the Canadian side. When you come back, you just call a 1-800 number and they don't even ask a video call. They just ask you some questions on the phone. So it's so easy to go back and forth between Canada and the United States. Um, but I heard a guy who left at a Niagara and he wanted to go back this way and he left at a Niagara and just cut across the American water on his way back to the Canadian side and he got stopped by the Coast Guard or Custom who Border Patrol or whoever it was and he told me they are like, you must go straight towards Canada. You cannot cut across our water, which is like, oh, I understand COVID's locking things down, but you're out in the middle of Lake Ontario. I mean, you're not, you're not going to get anybody sick over there. But anyways, luckily our plan was to visit our favorite city on Lake Ontario again. So we... Um, we visited Toronto, and that's where we got a lot of these, uh, learned about all these other anchorages. Side note, side note, um, we had gone um, EU seeing or PEVing from here, and that's when we did this. Um, we wanted to see if there was somewhere we could tie our dinghy to here, and I'm going to save you some time. We anchored here, and we took our dinghy across to the front of Toronto uh, shoreline here. And you can't tell from Google Map, especially can't tell from 2D where it's only looking straight down. Uh, it doesn't do it justice here, but these walls are like seven feet tall and they're made of jagged steel. And most of them had signs saying no, no tying up, no mooring. So we went all the way from this, come on, this park. This is a park. It's a bunch of little fiberglassy looking. Uh, I love how Google Earth always makes everything look blotchy like cartoons. But these are actually tables with umbrellas over it. And we thought, well, it's a park, right? You just tie your dinghy here and then all the way along here are bike paths. See this blue thing? Just bike paths everywhere. Uh, we thought if we could just tie our dinghy, uh, it'd be great. But these walls are huge, tall, seven foot walls made of jagged corrugated steel. Uh, obviously this is a factory, we weren't gonna tie that. These are condos. We pulled in here, couldn't find anything. These are all ferry boats that are constantly coming and going, so they're sending off huge wakes and we're in our little dinghy. And we just went this whole way and there was just nowhere that was a, a good place to tie. Uh, we were just doing a kind of a, a reconnaissance. We didn't bring our EUC and that with us in the dinghy because we were kind of half sure that we wouldn't be able to. What we ended up doing is we went into this marina and we ended up just tying our dinghy to this, like, this nondescript wall. There was a bunch of ladders on the wall. Um, we just came in here and just tied to a little cleat here and just climbed up the ladder and then just walked down this uh, white walking path. So there's like, this thing here is a walking path. And then this thing with the blue is a bike path. So the bikers and the pedestrians don't interact and they don't get into accidents with each other. But you should have seen these bikers. And somebody was asking the questions, can you ride these things in Toronto? Well, clearly I saw a ton of EUCs, electric unicycles riding on this thing. And even the cyclists, I don't know what it is about Toronto. These cyclists are going full bore down this thing. They are not lollygagging. They are all in their friggin' spandex outfits just going a mile a minute. So um, very interesting. But like I said, pedestrians, plenty of room to walk. Uh, very bike friendly slash scooter slash um, EUC friendly. And again, I saw tons of scooters, tons, well, not tons of EUCs because they're still pretty uh, uncommon, but I saw uh, more than more than six or seven of them go by me. It's funny, when I see one, when I was on Toronto Centre Island, one, uh, a Sherman went by, one of the ones I have, and I was like, hey, I tried to get his attention, but he was woof, gone. So I didn't get to like say I have the same thing. So we, uh, last year when we had the folding bikes, there's a beautiful boardwalk here. We did it with the folding bike, so we didn't bother again with the uh, scooter and the EUC. We can cover so much distance that this island, actually you could cover it there and back in like no time at all because it's really not that far when you're doing, you know, 30 kilometers an hour. But um, when we had the folding bikes, you can take a road that's in between here or just down here is a wooden boardwalk. I don't zoom in so you can kind of see it. Um, this is a wooden boardwalk that goes all the way along Center Island all the way down to the pier that's in the middle of the island, way over here. So again, walking, it would take you a while. I mean, we walked it this time. 
uh, with Jake and Rachel, uh, our son and his girlfriend, visited us while we're in Toronto, and we went and did the walk all the way down to this pier. And when you get down here, there's like little food courts here and like barbecue, you know, street meat vendors and all that stuff. All the way through, it's all beautiful gardens, more street meat vendors here. There's actually a kids' playground park thing in here. I don't know if it's really going to show, but there's a lot to do on Centre Island. And when you get here, you, if you're on Main Island, you can take ferries across, and I think it's $8 a person. Um, that might be round trip. Um, so there's, there's also water taxis. So you can get to this island in Toronto relatively inexpensively and spend the entire day. And there's just tons of parks with picnic benches and actually those outdoor barbecue pit things that you can use for free. And it's beautiful. And like I said, when we anchored in here, on the way back, we anchored here and we were like, this is awesome. We're like seeing the park from our boat. I mean, million dollar view and 360 degrees. And we were just thinking it's almost too good to be true. And it, it was too good to be true because the police came and said, you're not allowed to anchor here. And I'm like, but what about these other boats? So they're like, yeah, they're, they're charter boats. A lot of power boats in Toronto, they charter for the day. So they bring on these huge like 15, 20 people and they party and they got the music blaring. It's kind of annoying at times, but that's what these guys do to pay for their big power boats. Um, and they'll come out here and just throw anchor for like an hour and let people swim or whatever they want to do. Um, so they do that all the time. So that is Toronto. And then we just sort of uh, meandered back. Um, I didn't bother to film. We did We did go back. Um, we did ride in Belleville, and that will be in a future episode. I should really zoom out because it's a long way back. So we went back. We stopped in Whitby, except this time because the, the uh, transient boats were allowed. We actually got a slip in Whitby, and we rode a ton around Whitby because there's lots of bike paths and things to do and we needed to reprovision again. So uh, we just had so much fun. I do not regret at all um, getting rid of the folding bikes. The only thing, if I have to complain, like I said, the scooter I've already said range, I wish it was a 100 kilometer range instead of a 60 kilometer range because the real world is a lot lower than that. Uh, the EUC, the Sherman, my only gripe is it doesn't have a lift sensor. So you've got it powered on, you walk it like a, it's funny, it walks like a suitcase. Like you hold the thing and it rolls. If you lean the handle, it go, the motor moves forward. So it's always balancing itself. So it's very easy to walk with. You're not pulling it, it's actually driving itself. Um, problem is you sometimes forget, you put the handle down, you go to pick it up, put it in your car or something. And the minute you lift it off the ground, the wheel just goes, spins at like whatever max speed it can go. And it's beeping like crazy. And I actually damaged my rug in my house because I forgot that it was on and I went to pick it up and it started spinning and beeping and going crazy and my first reaction was to put it back down. And it did a burnout on my rug at home and I burned a big, it's right here in my office, burned a big patch into my, uh, into my rug that I can never get out now. But yeah, lift sensor because it's human nature. You ride up to, let's say a subway staircase or something, you ride up to the bottom of the staircase and you just sort of assume you can just get off, pick it up and walk up the stairs because every other EUC has a lift sensor. The minute it senses it's not actually on the ground, the motor turns off. Um, the Sherman, for some reason, they never bothered to put that in the software, I guess. So um, we didn't end up going the outside route like we were planning to. We we're going around the peninsula this way. I'm going to really zoom out to get a look at it. Going this way because the wind, you was really nowhere to anchor. We thought maybe this area inside here, there's a little opening, but it's so shallow in there. I thought, mm, I don't think my boat's going to fit in there. Um, and then you look at it, you're always got a, a lee shore behind you. If you try and stop for the night long here in anchor you're going to be pounded by waves you're going to worry all night you're going to drag into one of the, into the shoreline so we thought ah no so we went back the same route we came from which is kind of good because you get to see we droned um I, on this side of the of the murray canal i got the drone up and i shot uh, trenton here and the and i went up the murray canal saw boats going through under the bridges and stuff it was very very cool and then we got a slip uh, we were on a wall a visitor wall here in belleville and we rode around there um, so you get the point. I think I've made it clear that we love our EUC and our uh, scooter, and we would suggest anybody else who has a boat who's looking for a way to go and really like explore far and wide without like wearing themselves out trying to ride a bike. Um, yeah, they definitely would suggest you do it. So there we go. Let me just go through some of the questions. I know I've kind of let them slide now. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, yeah, so um, Soving says he loves the format. It's great to get new perspective to your travels. Yeah, I think this is unique, and I think I might keep doing this, even though it took me an extra day to figure out how to do this live streaming and actually get the sound to work and all that. And as you can see, there's been a few hiccups along the way. But um, it's more interactive. And there's a, like a gajillion sailing channels out there. One day when we live on a catamaran, we're going to be um, 
traveling. But let's face it, every other channel is some hot body 23-year-old girl and 25-year-old guy and chiseled abs and all that stuff. And I mean, you know, we're not into that. We're not going to ever be considered the hot couple. But um, a lot of times I'd rather have somebody say, hey, I really enjoy your videos and it, you, you're the type of person I like to have a beer with. That's a bigger compliment to me than being told, you know, you know you're hot looking, which is not going to happen anymore. Um, but yeah, I think doing these live episodes where you get to interact with the audience and you get to really give kind of more detailed thoughts on, of, of your travels is kind of a cool new format. And we'll see if you guys like it and the, and the views are there. I'll, I'll keep doing it this way. Um, I'm not familiar with the Great Lakes. John Swanson says, Craig, I'm not familiar with the Great Lakes, but I hear the weather can be challenging. Are there often small craft advisories? Yeah. Um, these big lakes have like their own weather pattern because, you know, the cold air from the water hits the warm air from land and all of a sudden out of nowhere, you got a big squall. Oh, and there's going to be some footage of a wicked squall that we go through. And exactly like you were saying, uh, John, we left and it was supposed to be calm, sunny. And you know how it always says chance of rain? Well, it didn't say chance of 40 knot winds. And twice during our trip, once when we were anchored in Toronto, I mean, it was gale force and it wasn't uh, forecasted at all. And again, when we were sailing back, um, at one point, this you can't, you know, you see the radar and you go, oh crap, it's coming. And you're already committed. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so you're like, you just bat down the hatches. Luckily, the wind was mostly coming from behind us, which meant it wasn't super bangy, but it was still like raining in like dead sideways. And um, again, if you looked at the weather forecast uh, when you left, um, it wasn't calling for that. If I'm ever leaving somewhere, before I leave, I look at the weather forecast, I look at the radar. And if it's calling for 40 knot winds and strong you know, wind advisory and small craft advisory, I'm like, forget it, I'm, I'm staying here. I would rather be tied up in some, you know, Coburg or some protected harbor than take a risk of getting out there and getting stuck in a 40 knot blow. Uh, can you tow Janet's scooter <laughs> with my EUC? It's not a one wheel, but it's uh, the one wheel is the board with the big fat wheel. Uh, my EUC, no. I mean, obviously, I'd have to hold it with my hand. There's no way to hook it on. But uh, yeah, what I did when she ran out of battery, the first time was not so far. We was like, what? Um, but on the second time, I think it was like 3.8 kilometers that we had to make it. So I zipped ahead because there was these little parks. And I thought some of these parks, there was one with like a, a like a little washroom facility and like water fountains. And I thought there's got to be a plug on the outside wall that we can just like sit there and plug in. No, these park people are smart. They don't want anybody stealing their electricity. Not a single plug outside these things. And we got there just after 4 p.m. on it was a weekday, weekend and uh, the bathrooms were closed and you know we couldn't get in. They even turned off the water fountains that were outside, which I thought is weird, like you're worried about people drinking water when it's after 4 p.m. So it was weird, but we could not find a power plug until we were about 0.8 kilometers away. And then sure enough, I found this outdoor uh, amphitheater type of thing that I, I kept zipping ahead and trying to find something coming back and telling what I found or didn't find. And I zipped ahead and I found this like outdoor amphitheater thing and I sure enough, I found a plug on the outside. But by then, we she'd walk like three kilometers. I um, I offered to, to to push her scooter, but then she would be pulling my EUC. So she preferred to just uh, walk with the scooter instead of uh, both of us walking with the thing. So and also too, I kept trying to find somewhere. I kept going off the side paths to find like a you know a Starbucks or something and just somewhere we could plug in. But it was no luck until the very end. It was almost too late by the time we found it. Um, Canadian CEO, I ride an Apollo Phantom. We should go ride sometime. Yeah, if you live in Ottawa, uh, send me an email at cruisingoffduty at gmail.com. Again, my name is Craig. Just tell me if you're in Ottawa and you've got a one wheel, an EUC, a scooter. Yeah, I'm always looking forward to going out. And I often have days off in the middle of the week because I have a, a, a rotating schedule. Um, I have days off in the middle of the week that Janice doesn't have and she's super busy at work. Literally, she says, don't talk to me. Even though she works from home, if I'm off and I come in and go, hey, how's it going? And she's like, I'm busy. Don't talk to me. And then she'll come talk to me when she's not busy. But I, I learned the lesson. It's a one-way street. Um, the, maid of, the Maiden of the Mist. Is that what the boat's called? I always thought it was the Maid of the Mist. Yeah, Maiden of the Mist it is then. Uh, laying rubber in the house. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I got to look at it every day on my rug here in my office. Uh uh, the beer is on when you come to Lac St. Francis in Quebec. Cool. Thank Laszlo. Yeah, I'd love to meet more people. We're meeting a lot more people now that we're at this new yacht club because it's a lot more social. Uh, and we miss that. The PN Sailing Club, it was like, 
so social. We had so many friends that every time we went out on the weekend, we'd go to an anchorage and it was like, oh, we know them, we know them, we know them, we know. There's so many people to hang out with. And now we're on this big body of water in Lake Ontario and you leave and because everybody's so so many places to go, even if you know a few people from your club, unless you all get together and say, we're all gonna anchor at this one spot, unless you make the effort, you can't just go out and randomly expect to bump into another boat that you know it's not gonna happen. If it does, it's just dumb luck. So there we go. I think that is everything. So yeah, we uh, had a great trip. It was four weeks, in case you're wondering how long we were doing it. I had five weeks vacation. I stayed on the boat one more week at the end just to like, well, I hate I hate going back to home. Uh, I love being on the boat. So I stayed an extra week and Janice used that week, extra week to go camping with Jake and his girlfriend and his, her dad and all. She likes camping. I love boating. She likes both, but I, I love camp boating way more than I like sleeping in a tent on the ground. So uh, I would rather spend my extra week on the boat and that's what I did. Ah, Australia. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, beer, beer. I'd like to try the Australian beer. I'm sure you got some unique stuff that we're not used to getting over here. Canada is known for their beer, so there's some good beer here too. So if you ever if you ever do make your way to Canada, try try some of ours as well. It's uh, way better than the American beer. Okay, so that's it. I don't want to keep this too much longer. So if there's any last minute questions, throw them in now. Otherwise, I'm just gonna say hopefully. Oh, I want in the comments. Let me know if you like this live format. Uh, now that I've kind of hopefully we'll have to see the final product that it's not too glitchy, but uh, and nobody's commented that it's super glitchy, so that's good. Um, if it is. Uh, good and you like it and it's more interactive and fun I'll keep doing my uh, upcoming sailing videos this way I think it's it's good to build a community so uh, for sure let's do this until next time this is Craig signing off wishing you safe cruising and don't forget to hit the like button because that's what YouTube decides makes a video worth suggesting to other people so if you do nothing else for the channel um, give it a thumbs up thanks a lot and that's it I gotta learn to turn the stream off End stream in three, two, one, bye.